Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm going to be filming my worst slash most disappointing books of 2020. I kind of feel a bit bad saying worst uh, because I don't think any of these books are like inherently bad apart from one. Uh, they're just books that I got the least pleasure from this year, was the most disappointed. They're all two star books apart from one is a one star book and yeah, let's talk about them. So there's actually only nine books on this list. Um, I know people usually do like 10, but for me, when I was looking at what I'd read this year, I read over 150 books. Um, there was only nine that I looked at and was like, oh, I really didn't like you. And it felt bad to kind of try and shoehorn in a 10th. I would say um, beyond that, there were four books that I would put into the, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed category where they were also two star books. I don't think they, were as unenjoyable as the rest, but at the start, I really thought I was gonna love them and then they massively let me down. Those four would be Late in the Day by Tessa Hadley, Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Marino Garcia, Gingerbread by Helen Oyemi, and Wilder Girls by Rory Power. So let's get started on the nine books that were my most disappointing of the year. I'll start with the only one star book um, and the book that I think is kind of the worst book I read this year and that is Framed by Ronnie O'Sullivan. I don't have my copy here because the only reason I read this book is that my friend a couple of years ago bought it for me as a joke, sent it to around our friendship group um, and I eventually read it this year and then passed it on. So if you don't know, Ronnie O'Sullivan is a very famous snooker player, English snooker player and I love him, like I actually quite like watching snooker sometimes. I think he's an, obviously an amazing snooker player, a really interesting guy, he seems like a really nice guy. Do I think he should have written a crime novel about snooker? Not so much. So yeah, this book is basically about a young man who is a living in London, is a really good snooker player, owns a snooker club, and is kind of mixed up in organized crime. And it's kind of like a murder mystery story. Someone is framed for murder. Um, and it's like a play on snooker frames, wordplay, you know? Uh, this book was just like not well written. Obviously he worked with a ghostwriter. Um, but yeah, it was the only book on this list that I think was like actively badly written. Um, it had kind of plot holes. Its depiction of women wasn't the best. Um, there's just a lot of kind of like loose ends. I don't really like reading about organized crime. I don't like reading stories where someone's framed because it makes me just feel like stressed. Um, so yeah, this was just not the one. However, I will say I love Ronnie O'Sullivan and the video of him as I've mentioned hundreds of times, using like a VR headset to play snooker and forgetting and leaning on the table and face planting is my favorite video of all time. And I watch whenever I'm sad. So sorry, Ronnie, but you were the worst book I read this year, not gonna lie. Okay, so I haven't put the rest in any order. I'm just gonna pick them up at random and talk to you about why they were the most disappointing books for me. So first we have The Deed of a Lifetime by Frederick Bachman. I read this in December uh, when I was reading Christmassy books um, in a vlog and this is a very, very short book. It's only 65 pages and within that, a lot of the pages are illustrated. So it's kind of even shorter. And I just didn't enjoy this book um, for a few reasons. So I thought it was gonna be Christmassy and maybe quite like moving and heartwarming. It isn't Christmassy and it isn't really very heartwarming. It's set on Christmas Eve, but that's about it. And I actually found it kind of a bit just like depressing, a bit kind of pointless. I think cause it was so short, I couldn't really get involved with any of the characters. There's not much to say about the plot because it's so short without giving it away, apart from saying it's kind of about a father and son estranged um, and about their relationship, but we just didn't get enough time for me to fully understand these characters, to feel invested in them. The book felt like it was really trying to tug on the heartstrings. It had quite a lot of like depressing elements in it that I think tried to build to a really emotionally impactful climax. But I, because I couldn't care about the characters very much, felt more just depressed than uplifted by the end or, or moved. It's also kind of like a bit of a speculative story, which just didn't really work for me again because it was so short. I just, yeah, I just really didn't like this book. I'm sorry. I do like Frederick Bachman, but this was just a massive fail for me. Then we have Sight by Jesse Greengrass. Um, I was really sad to not like this book. Um, this is probably the most literary book I'd say on the list. And I don't think this is a bad book. Um, I potentially think I wasn't clever enough for it maybe. I don't know. I just didn't get anything out of this. I know a lot of people do get something out of it and they think it's like really amazingly written. Um, but for me, 
it just did nothing. It was a real struggle to get through. It's basically about a woman who is pregnant and a lot about preg her pregnancy and becoming a mother. And then she also reflects upon her own childhood and her relationship with her mother and her grandmother. Her grandmother was a very well-respected psychoanalyst um, and all of that stuff should work for me. I love intergenerational female relationships. I love reading about motherhood and I love reading about like the psyche, but it just didn't work for me. There was also a thread that I think was what made it particularly not working for me um, about kind of scientific discovery and the man who discovered the x-ray. It was like this thread of like real scientific things that happened throughout it and I did have to really push myself through those scientific bits. I'm not a massively scientific person. It's not something I really like reading about. I couldn't quite reconcile why they were there. It's a pretty bleak story. The characters are all very flat. I found it hard to not relate to them, but to kind of, I don't know, get beyond the sort of surface level. Um, it is a very like introspective analytical book, like extremely analytical about every little action, which again is sometimes something that I really like and really works for me, but this just didn't. Um, there was a few passages that I thought the writing was really beautiful, um, specifically about motherhood, but it just, for me, it wasn't worth all the kind of struggle of getting through it and not really feeling anything um, to eventually kind of land on a few really beautifully phrased moments. I do think Jessie Greengrass is a really accomplished writer, but this just isn't really what I look for in a novel. Next, I have The Furies by Katie Lowe. This was such a disappointment for me. I really didn't enjoy it. Um, I don't think it's YA. I'm not sure it might be YA. And then in that case, I can see why maybe I was so disappointed in it because you know, some, there is a lot of crossover with those genres, but then also there's a lot of kind of tropes and things that a YA book will do that an adult book might not, or an adult book might go deeper into, and maybe that's why I was disappointed. This is about a girls' school. Our main character starts at this school, makes friends with this very, like, clicky, elitist group of girls. Um, there's a lot of stuff about the history of witchcraft at the school, and then right at the start of the book, you find out that one of these girls in this group is gonna die um, and that previously, in the previous year, another girl who'd been part of this friendship group is already dead. So when our main character starts and meets these friends, they're mourning the loss of another girl who's part of the group and yeah, it kind of looks at, at that mystery developing. Again, it should really work for me, like, but, like girls' school, witchcraft, a bit of mystery. I should have really loved it, but I just found it kind of boring, kind of underdeveloped and disappointing. Um, the kind of clique of these female characters were just very tropey, stereotypical. It really, really reminded me of the YA that I read when I was a teenager. And I think that's what I mean. Like I've read YA now that is much better and I can see how far it's come. Whereas this felt very reminiscent of the tired tropes I read as a teenager. You know, these girls who are very young, but very edgy because they go out and they drink and they don't care about anything. And yeah, the female friendships I didn't think were well developed, which is something that I love. I thought they could have done a lot more with that. The witchcraft elements just seemed like they were put in maybe for style over substance. And ultimately this mystery was so disappointing. It was wrapped up in genuinely three sentences in maybe the last 20 pages of the book um, with no kind of real build up to it. It was literally a character went, I did it, I killed that person because blah, blah. Like within three sentences, everything was wrapped up and yeah, I just didn't enjoy this book. Next we have Animals by Emma Jane Unsworth. Again, I was really disappointed not to like this. This is sort of millennial fiction um, and it's set in Manchester and it follows two young best friends in their twenties kind of living together, living quite a like wild lifestyle um, and their relationship to each other, their kind of work situation. What the main character wants to be a writer, she has, is in a romantic relationship and kind of the tensions of that with her best friend. All of that stuff could have really worked for me again, but in this case, it didn't. Um, I found the two characters just so exhausting to read about. I don't mind reading about unlikable characters, but when these two characters, you're so in just the intricacies of what they're doing and when every decision they make, you just think is, I don't know, unbelievable, frustrating. They're so selfish. Their friendship's really toxic. It just, yeah, it was just a bit of a drag to read, to be honest. I didn't really find it like funny. Um, they're like so wacky because you know, they do loads of drugs and they're really horrible people and like cool. But for me, there was nothing beyond that to make like those bits enjoyable because really it's just these two people like living their lives in a way that wasn't interesting to me, wasn't kind of 
anything. Those people like absolutely love it so much and I just didn't. I felt like a lot of the things that were being talked about, maybe I just read them before and I think in other millennial fiction books and read about them in a better way. The plot was quite predictable, well, very predictable, and I just found it a bit pretentious, to be honest. Next up is The Uninvited Guest by Sadie Jones. I've spoken about this book a lot because it was the first book that I read this year, and so whenever I talk about my most disappointing books of this year, I talk about this. I hated this book. I really hated it, um, which is a shame because I love Sadie Jones' novel that uh, the Snakes and that's why I picked this up. This is very different to The Snakes, this is historical fiction and I imagined it was going to be a bit of like a historical thriller mystery. The premise is that you're in this big house, I'm just checking my camera's not getting too hot, um, you're in this big house, this rich family um, are having a birthday party and then there's a train crash nearby and all of the passengers from the train are kind of forced to take refuge in the house and one of the characters seems slightly nefarious and it's about these people being like pushed together, which I love. Love closed tight focus books and people being pushed together in the tensions this book wasn't written in any way like a thriller or a mystery there was no tension like the first part of the book almost read like and i can never find the right way to describe this a sort of almost like stella gibbon's cold comfort farm but less funny like it was very just the ins and outs of this rich family and quite prim and proper just quite like everyday life I don't know it almost felt like reading a more like commercial historical fiction like there wasn't really any feel of tension or building um which in the snakes is one of the things I loved so much about it because from the start there's just this undercurrent of something not being right and building to something so I found that writing style but like the first part of it was quite boring a lot about like what dish to use to, at this birthday party um and these kind of like a bit absurd characters where I'm like is this going to be funny but then it wasn't funny and then the guests arrived. There was about 20 pages in the middle of this book where I was like, oh my God, this is where it's gonna flip. This is where it's gonna happen. It was really tense. And then I hated the direction it went in. It got very kind of a little bit surreal, like dreamlike. Again, I felt like, am I just not intelligent enough for this? Because I just couldn't really grasp what it was trying to do. And it got very like fever dreamlike. I didn't enjoy the process of reading it yeah the two halves of the novel felt very different and ultimately like this thing that is behind the whole plot just didn't work for me it's not a trope i like and yeah i just didn't really enjoy any of this book apart from those 20 pages it was such such a disappointment um yeah i also hate the cover i think it's so ugly sorry okay next um liar by aliak gundar goshen this cover i really like also really did not like the book i read this for women in translation month um this is an israeli author and the premise is basically that a young girl lies about being sexually assaulted. And I was like, okay, interesting. This is either going to be, I don't know, it's quite a bold topic to take on, I think. Um, especially when, you know, the reality of the fact is that most people, the large majority of cases, overwhelming majority, people don't lie about sexual assault. But then in the media, that's something that's perpetrated a lot and something that we're told to constantly expect, you know, she's just lying for attention. And in this book, the girl is lying because it gets her attention. Um, so I was like, okay, this is either going to do something really, really interesting, or it's just going to fall back onto tropes that I inherently really disagree with and make me quite angry in real life. And for me, it just did the second girl was kind of a very irritating character to read. I didn't really feel like there was enough fleshed out into her motivations and into the society. It was very much like this girl feels ugly um, and rejected by her friends and family for no real reason, just a reason that, you know, a lot of teenage people do find when they're at that time in their life. And so she lies. Okay. I thought, oh, maybe I'll look more at the other characters who are involved in it, like the way her family reacts. There's another teenage boy who's kind of embroiled in it. And again, he was like doing this bad thing because he felt as a young person slighted by society. Like, and he wanted attention. Okay, cool. What really, I, what really point are you trying to make for me? I don't know. It just didn't really do anything interesting enough. And it just felt frustrating because I felt like I don't think the author is perpetuating that and I don't think that's what she was trying to do with this book. I think she was trying to create a very like morally grey story but for me I just I don't think that worked. There's also like a second narrative, second plot line with a totally different character weaved in about halfway through the book which I thought was slightly more interesting although again very 
two-dimensional in my opinion that this one was better than the main narrative again it was about like why we lie about things and i thought that one was better but the fact it was introduced so late and then seemed a bit like an obvious like comparison like this person's lying and that's wrong but then this person's lying and that's right so how do you know what's right or wrong i don't know the moral grayness wasn't developed enough all of the characters were extremely frustrating not well fleshed out really didn't enjoy this book Oof, i feel like i got a bit feisty there then a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Obviously a, a classic. Um, just didn't enjoy it, to be honest. It's in here because I genuinely got no enjoyment from reading this story. Perhaps because it's so short, perhaps because I know the story of A Christmas Carol, although I'd never read the original text. Um, I guess there wasn't much tension for me. There wasn't much compelling me through the story, but I just don't think I really like Charles Dickens' prose very much. There's a lot in this book about I don't know, it's very descriptive about um, surroundings, about environment, about like sensory objects and stuff, which is fine. It's just not my style of writing. I am someone who likes a lot more introspection and a lot more about character. And I just know that's not of the time. Of course that book wasn't gonna be like that. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't that I was expecting that. I just thought it might be, I don't know. I just never read it before. So I didn't really know what to expect. And I thought, oh, it might be really festive and just very, I don't know, like a real good yarn. Because I do like some classics that are a really good story. This just, I don't know, I found it boring to be honest. I had to push myself through it. Just didn't like it, I'm sorry. And then finally, uh, Those People by Louise Candlish. This is a thriller and I just thought it was really poor, which was such a shame. This had come on a personal recommendation and I was like, okay, brilliant. You know, there's so many thrillers out there to kind of try and find the good ones when you get a personalized recommendation. It's like amazing and I, just thought this was quite rubbish. Um, I read it, I think, all in one day. It's very fast paced. The premise is that some there's a very rich street um, somewhere outside London and it's a very like white picket fence, perfect street. They're very pleased with themselves, these very middle class people who live there. And then a new person moves in, buys a house and he's a very working class man. Um, and he kind of isn't a very nice and stirs things up in the street. And then you also know at the start of the book, there's been a murder but you're not really sure who um it wasn't really a thriller in my opinion it was a social satire that was quite well done but not amazing but then because it was still trying to be a thriller and in the second half of the book when it's really trying to be like twists and turns i was like i'm not invested and that thriller part of it was really predictable i think you could have written just like a I don't know, a fiction book about the tensions on the street because the first half of it, there's nothing really um, thrillery or nefarious happened. It's just about these sort of like micro interactions with the neighbors. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Parts I thought it was quite funny, but then because you're then shoehorned into being like, oh, but this is a thriller and there's this big mystery without any of the tension, it's all fairly like low risk. Stakes aren't particularly high until the end where they are, but it just felt a bit like going through the motions. The eventual, reveals when they came super predictable like there's two big things that are like twists or like who done it guess them both a mile off and yeah because it was trying to be two things at once in my opinion it didn't really succeed in being either of them so this was a massive disappointment i know our house by louise candlish is really popular and that's about like a cult and that still does kind of appeal to me because i think she can obviously write characters well because she manages somewhat of a social satire, but all of the characters in here were also like very typical tropey thriller characters. So I'm not sure if I would pick that up or not. Okay, so they are all the most disappointing books that I read this year. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I don't like being overly negative, but equally, as I've said, I don't think any of these books are like inherently bad. And I think it's useful to know what worked for people and what didn't. I don't think it's pro hashtag problematic to talk about these things. However, if that was a bit too negative for you, my best books of the year will be coming up tomorrow, which I'm very excited about. I'm gonna film that um, later on today. And yeah, that'll be a much more positive, fun video. Um, I'll leave the rest of my kind of end of year content that's come out so far linked below. So I did a stats video, my December wrap up. And like I say, I'll see you tomorrow for my next one. Thanks for watching, bye.